Hi, Journey Church. Happy Wednesday night, and welcome back to another James teaching. We are in our 11th teaching in this James series. It's hard to believe that we've come this far already and learned so many great things about how our faith life with Jesus just produces so many good qualities in us and helps us to understand and know the Lord better through his character. Um, I am particularly excited about this specific passage that we're going to be going through. We're going through chapter four in James. Um, I just think that this is just such a sweet topic to talk about because we're going to be talking about humility and how faith produces humility. Um, It's been really interesting to see the ways in which, you know, we are learning about how our faith should spur us on to do good works or that our faith should be something that causes us to take a second to pause and remember that good things come from the Lord, or that the Lord condemns and calls out discrimination and just any variety of things. I've felt particularly like, uh, like called to really bring some things before the Lord. And so I think that this particular discussion about humility is really great in the sense that it allows us to kind of look at where we're putting our identity and gives us an opportunity to observe that. So Humility, in its like Merriam-Webster definition, is a modest or low view of oneself to be humble. So I think we often get in this rut sometimes where we really just like let the world determine who we are. We get in this place where we can either be told that like we have no value by the world or we can get in this place where like we get puffed up by like positive things that people say about us or like say towards us. Um, so like as an example, I'm, I'm super into fashion and I'm like generally really, really excited about new fashion trends. Um, it's one of my favorite ways that society chooses to engage with um, art and chooses to express itself. I think that it's just like bold and colorful and really cool and I just like absolutely love it. However, <laughs> I can sometimes very easily get like cocky and excited if I'm like out in public and I'm like wearing a cute outfit that I'm like really proud because I like curated it myself and someone's like wow you look really good like I really like the way that that shirt looks on you like for some reason in me that just does something where I just like can sometimes be like oh yeah I look really cute and then it like will take over my life for like a good solid like day or two where I just like take half an hour staring at my closet and I'm like, hmm, what am I going to wear today? Because I have to top the outfit that I was wearing at my Zoom meeting yesterday, my Zoom meeting. People see this much of my body upwards. I don't need to be that focused on it. And it doesn't happen all the time where I get this like weird inflated self um, or view of self that takes up time and energy. And it's like a trivial example, of course, to think of it that way. But like, if I don't gain humility in Jesus, can you imagine how bad that could get? I could start comparing myself to others and damage my self-image, even though I know that I'm made in the image of the Lord. Like, I know that for a fact, and so it doesn't necessarily matter like what I'm wearing as long as I feel like I'm expressing myself as best as I can and being true. Like, the Lord is my mirror. I could start to hyper fixate fixate myself on my own income and wealth so that I have enough money to keep up with trends, to do what society is determining as good. And I could do all these things in support of the fast fashion industry, which inherently oppresses people who are marginalized by exploiting them for work because I've convinced myself that my view of self is more important than purchasing local or fair trade garments at higher prices. When we do not consider how humility interacts with our faith and our daily walk with Jesus, we know that it's time to examine our faith in order to focus on the victory of who Jesus is and what victory means for our identity as those who are beloved by Jesus, first and foremost. And we gain humility when we recognize that we do not belong to the world. We do not belong 
to anyone but the Lord, and that we belong in community. So without further ado, let's take some time. We're going to be in James chapter 4. We're going to be going through the first 12 verses of this, which is discussing the topic of submitting yourself to God. So it says this. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy to God. Or do you think that scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. And that is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or a sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Wow, lots of powerful imagery. And even just talking about fighting and quarreling and the amount of literal physical distress that we experience when we don't allow ourselves to know that the Lord is enough always. And that's where our identity begins. So this first kind of point that I was talking about is that you don't belong to this world. You never have. And in verses 1 through 5, we kind of get to see the ways in which like, our interaction with the things of this world causes us to do ugly things because we can't interact with it well. And the things of this world only provide us like a temporary satisfaction or a temporary sense of self-worth, right? Like we can hide all of our insecurities by like asking for like money to make us feel like we can purchase all the things that we want or kind of like my example earlier, like I can feel less insecure when I'm like dressed really, really well and someone tells me I look good or I can think that my job provides me the security and the stability of knowing that I'm good at doing things. But those things are temporary. They will fade away. When we ask for things with an insincere heart or an insecure heart even, we are asking because we are first identifying with the world. And we've talked about this time and time again where the banner over your life determines the posture with which you're walking into battle, into doing the Lord's work here on earth. So if you're carrying a banner that says, my first value is earthly possessions and earthly ideals, these things will not be strong enough for you to stand on. Come time for things to be hard and messy. My wardrobe will not protect me <laughs> from the things of this world. the person that you are putting all of your hopes and dreams in will not protect you from the ways that things will get ugly. And in Luke 16, verse 11, it says this, so if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, then who will trust you with true riches? The Lord has an immensely important path for your life that is eternal, eternal and unshakable, and it cannot be paved on ground that is not solid. So if you're going to plan 
to be untrustworthy with earthly riches that will crumble in your hands like sand? How are you going to be expected to handle the riches of the kingdom? If your foundational identity is in wealth or pride or achievement or romance or anything that isn't the Lord first and foremost, you will miss out on the incredible opportunity to know who the Lord is, to see his compassion, his grace and mercy, and let it transform your heart. So as long as you have a sense of pride within you, where all you know is that your identity is tethered to things here, and you continue to be puffed up in such a way, there will be discomfort. That's just the truth of it, brothers and sisters. I know that that sounds horrid, but that's because it's how it feels. Faith means you leaving all of those things behind in pursuit of something different. Humility looks like putting our pursuit of that which seeks to bolster only ourselves aside and taking up the pursuit of the Lord. Because we don't belong to the things of this earth. They cannot define our life and they cannot be our banner. The greatest pursuit of your heart should be Jesus. Who came not as this like great, high-achieving war general like people had hoped, but he was a servant. His heart wanted to serve. And that's what our heart should look like. We cannot have the same kind of pride that the world would want us to have because we don't belong to the world. In fact, you belong to the Lord. And in verses 6 through 10, we get to see just how much our identity lies in who Jesus is. It even says in verse 6, like, the Lord jealously longs for the spirit that he caused to dwell in us. The Lord does not want you identifying with other things because that means that he can't have your heart. He's not going to force you into a relationship with him, but my goodness, does he want you to experience a relationship with him. And like, sure, he's powerful enough to do that, but that's not part of his character. That's not what love looks like. He's too gracious for that to be the case. Jesus died for our ability to, to be the indwellings of the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave us the ability to receive who he is when he sent his son as a sacrifice in exchange for the times that we held up our banners emblazoned with names of other idols. He sent Jesus even though we've done those things. You belong to the Lord. And no amount of money or power, no good physical appearance or importance that you find in yourself could ever hold up to how beautiful that identity is. And God cannot stand the things that puff you up with pride because they detract from your true identity as a child of God, holy and beloved. Because when you have pride in yourself, you are not recognizing the fact that you are made in the image of God. You are made to reflect who he is to those around you. And so pride cannot stand in the same place as humility because it doesn't allow you to experience who the Lord is. Those who know that they belong to him experience his favor. You receive his righteousness and his grace, his resurrection power when you know that you serve a just and merciful God. It even says it right there. Therefore, submit yourselves to the Lord. It's that easy, right? You just submit yourself to the Lord. Absolutely not. I would never say that doing that Day in and day out is easy. It requires a lot of work to lay down your worship of self in order to worship the Lord. 
It is you washing your hands and ridding your heart of sin. It is wailing and grieving and mourning at the separation we experience from the Lord. It is a purging of the things that you are used to that make you comfortable. So no, it isn't easy to begin to prune your life of the things that are easy to worship. Because we are so used to doing that as humans. But you belong to the Father who is there to guide you through that process with loving kindness. There is not a moment that he will forsake or leave you in that moment as you decide to remove the things that remove you from him. And even though that process is hard, you will experience joy unlike any other. I can promise you that. When you faithfully take up your identity as a child of God, as a servant to the Lord, and that, create, that takes great humility. But that's what faith is. And the other really neat part about this is that it's not like God is asking you to do that alone. The process of getting rid of our pride to make space for humility is long and arduous, and you cannot do it without a community of people around you. Belonging to the Lord is not singular. You are not alone in that. You are a part of a great cloud of witnesses. You are a part of an entire family of people that also belong to him and comprise his kingdom here on this side of heaven. You belong in community. And Colossians 3.12 says this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's not a singular command to just one person. It's a command over all of his family, over all of his children. We are not charged to do this alone. Because taking pride and removing it from your life, taking an inflated sense of self and removing it from your life is difficult. And the Lord gives us ways to do that through scripture and through community, through being with one another and upholding one another. But that also means that we cannot ourselves be convinced that we're the ones making the rules here or judging. And it even says here at the end of this passage of James, like, who do you think you are to judge your neighbor? There is only one lawgiver and only one judge, and it's Jesus. So it is not up to us to take up that stance, because then we are again taking up pride. We're re-sowing the seeds of pride when we think that we are the ones leading the charge to follow the law. When we think that we're the ones who need to judge a brother and a sister. But this is why the Lord gives you community, so that you cannot re-sow that seed of pride, so that you can sit and you can have the discussions with your brother and sister to uphold in each other the image of God, to tell each other when things are painful or hard or difficult. You have to be in community because it allows you to hold each other accountable to having hearts that look like the Lord's while loving one another well. You belong in community because it gives you a space to experience the character of the Lord in others and for them to uphold the ideals of the creator in you. Because on our own, it can get so easy to start believing that we know what is best and know what is right, to become prideful in our own ability. But the Lord called you amidst brothers and sisters 
find deep relationship with one another that will allow you to continually recognize that you are children of God together as you do the Lord's work in the here and now. The Lord gave us all each other so that we can weed out the sin of pride and experience what it is to serve people who reflect the image of God. And we get to serve people regardless of what their relationship with the Lord looks like then. You don't have to be only serving rule followers or people who are right with the law. No, your heart serves everyone because they all reflect the image of God. That's what Jesus did. And Jesus was the perfect example of humility. Someone who had every single right because of his perfection and who he was, had every right to come to us and be prideful. But he came as a servant. He came and provided or needs. He came knowing that the world would despise him and gave his all for his brothers and sisters as a perfect example of what it is to serve those around you well. You belong to your brothers and sisters because they belong to Jesus. And you are not held down by the world. The world can give us so many opportunities to worship ourselves. It allows us to convince ourselves that if we have enough control over our own image and we are able to just like fashion a life out of the things of this world, we can find a great sense of satisfaction. But we know that we do not belong to this world because in the end, all of it is temporary. We belong to an eternal God who is unchanging and always good. And the continued process of deciding to and remembering this identity as children of God is never easy. But the Lord does not let us carry that task alone. And we are encouraged to carry it with our brothers and sisters. And we will always celebrate that victory which made us family. That which allowed us to be free of the pressure of being perfect. And allowed us to just come alongside one another to discover the Lord's character. And to experience what it is to serve one another in love. Let's pray. Jesus, it is hard for me to wrap my brain around the fact that you were such a brilliant example of what it is to humbly serve. That you had every right by human standards at the least, to be as powerful as you wanted. You had unlimited access to that, and yet you came and you served, and you cared for the need of a brother. You heard the plight of a sister. And you did not hesitate to set aside your sense of self in order to serve first because you knew that you belonged to the Father. What a beautiful picture of what it is to have full and complete faith knowing that you are provided for so much so that there is nothing to worry about when sacrificing time and effort in order to make sure people are loved well. God, we thank you for the ability to set aside the things that tether us here in order to know who you are, to have the eternal perspective that you have riches beyond what we would ever want here, that you 
have given us an identity that is already so much better than what we could have ever planned. Thank you so much, Lord, for the grace that you give us which allows us to boldly go forward knowing full well that you want our hearts and that a life lived in pursuit of your heart is one of great humility and faith. We thank you for this time that we were able to hear from you and we pray a blessing over our search for a heart that looks like yours in our own life. Lord, we are so thankful for who you are and for the ways that you continue to do a good work in us. We pray that we may never forget what it is to be truly yours at all moments. In your name, amen. Well, thanks, Journey family, for joining us on this Wednesday night. I hope that you have a great rest of your evening.